Well, welcome to our midweek worship again on YouTube. Uh, and on behalf of our producer, Mark Jenks, and myself, Pastor Mark Wilms of Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Royal Iowa, uh, I hope your winter is beginning well, in spite of all the different challenges going on. Uh, we begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we pray the prayer, our Lord taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come before you. Amen. Um, there's been a popularity among human beings through all times, I guess, to engage in magic or fortune telling. And even today, in our highly technological age, horoscopes still appear in the uh, papers all the time. Uh, people may uh, strangely condemn religion on one hand, but on the other hand, run to fortune tellers. Uh, that's the kind of schizophrenia, if you want to call it that, that we live with today. Uh, the Bible made it clear that uh, those kinds of things are against the will of God because they uh, take our allegiance away from God and instead put our trust in uh, you know, these kinds of messages that could lead us down a wrong path anyway. We're supposed to put all our trust in God for our future. Well, uh, that being said, it's kind of interesting, and you may not know this, that there was one successful seance uh, in the Old Testament, and that was in 1 Samuel chapter 28. The prophet Samuel uh, died, and um, Saul, the king, expelled all the mediums and spiritists from the land. But also, Saul was heading towards destruction, and when everything is up for grabs and your whole life is being risked on threats that are coming, you turn to anything, and in this case, the Philistines were assembling and about to destroy Israel on the military battlefield. When Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid, it says, terror filled his heart, I'm quoting the scripture, he inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams uh, or prophets. So Saul then said to his attendants, find me a medium so I can go and ask her. Uh, even though he had expelled them from the land, he was willing on the side to kind of be in a state of denial for a moment and uh, turn to a medium. So it says Saul disguised himself, put on other clothes so she wouldn't realize he was the king, and then he and two men went to the woman. Uh, he said, call up a spirit for me and bring up the one I named. But the woman said to him, you know what King Saul has done. Of course, she doesn't know that she's with the king there. He's cut off the mediums and spiritists from the land. You're going to bring me about my death if I do that. But Saul, Saul swore to her by the Lord, as surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. The woman said, all right, who should I bring up? And he said, bring up Samuel. Samuel and Saul were old nemeses against each other. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. She could finally see now that he was the king. And the king said, don't be afraid. What do you see? And she said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? He asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up. Saul knew then that it was Samuel. 
and he bowed down and with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul in this passage of scripture, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Uh, Saul said, I'm in great distress. The Philistines are fighting against me. So I've called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, why do you ask me now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? Those are ominous words. The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. Well, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words, and his strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all that day and night. Now, that may have been a successful seance. The Lord can do anything. Uh, although, there's some question mark with that. Uh, it may be that the Lord allowed Samuel to be seen and heard for his own purposes. But note that only the medium is said to have actually seen Samuel. But it does not say that Saul saw him, only that he heard him. Maybe the medium was only practicing her trade, fooling Saul uh, by disguising her voice, which mediums used to do in those days, uh, believing that she actually saw Samuel, uh, and that the words coincided with the news, which already had been circulating anyway, about David and the king. So we're not quite sure, but we do know that on that day, Saul learned the terrible truth that if you don't trust in the Lord for your future, your future will look grim indeed. Very interesting passage, and you can find it to read it again in 1 Samuel 28. That's 1 Samuel chapter 28. Let me close with a prayer. O oh God, our beginning and our end, uh, you have been with us during the days of our pilgrimage. You lead the children of Israel through the midst of the sea, and now you lead us through our lives. Make our ways safe and our homecomings joyful. Uh, make our trust be in the Lord and not in anyone else. May our future belong to you, and may we live in that belief and that trust. Through Christ our Lord and the Holy Spirit, through God the Father, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have a great week.